Greetings. It is a joy to share with you from God's precious Word. Today I would like to speak on an important subject, the essential elements of faith. Faith is so important because in Hebrews 11.6, we are told that without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he that comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. In other words, if we love the Lord, we will want to please Him, and we cannot please Him without faith. Faith is much more than a declaration of our desire or wish for something, as some would say. God's Word clearly defines five essential elements for faith to bring forth the reward that God desires for us. Faith begins with God. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, Hebrews 12, verse 2. Let's look together at God's part and our part of faith. Number one, receiving the rhema. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word, and the Greek is rhema, of God. Romans 10, 17. Faith is initiated in us when God speaks a rhema to us. The phrase Word of God is used to translate two different Greek words with very different meanings. One word is logos, which is used to denote a discourse or teaching. It is a general word that would apply to anyone. For example, if I read the Bible and God has not spoken especially to me, that is logos. The other word is rhema, which is a specific word that God speaks to a specific individual for a specific situation. God can speak in still, small voice, or He can also quicken to us something from the Bible. Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 6 provides us with an excellent example of the distinction between these two Greek words. In verse 1, the word logos is used when Jesus taught the multitude. In verse 5, Jesus gave Peter a rhema that produced the faith for the large catch of fish. This specific word was given to Peter for this situation and cannot be replicated unless God gives it as a rhema again or to another individual. Many Christians have tried to apply a rhema given to another situation or person to their own circumstances. This usually produces misunderstanding and personal frustration. It is hearing a rhema from God that initiates faith. Remember, Jesus is the author and finisher of faith. We cannot initiate faith out of our own needs, desires, or wishes. It must be born from the heart of God. This is God's part. Without the rhema, we cannot have faith. Number two, believing the rhema. After the essential first step of receiving the rhema, which initiates faith, the next part of faith is to believe what God says. The first step comes from God. The second step is our responsibility. We must believe God. Believe in the Lord your God. 
so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. 2 Chronicles 20.20 20. Faith proceeds no further if we do not believe what God has spoken to us. If you will not believe, surely you shall not be established. Isaiah 7 verse 9. Believing can be quite simple if we understand how something can be achieved, but difficult when it is beyond our comprehension. If we are to believe God, we must not rely upon our own understanding, trying to figure out how everything can be accomplished. Proverbs 3 verse 5. What does it mean to believe God? Believing is to be so fully persuaded that what God has said is true, that our words and actions portray a confidence that it is so. Sometimes we may have difficulty believing because our heart has become hardened through sin or disappointments. If so, it is important to meet with the Lord on this and ask Him for a soft, believing heart. If we truly believe what God has spoken to us, we will move on to the other necessary responses. Number three, confessing what God declares. So far, we have looked at two steps toward faith, hearing the rhema of God and believing it. Now, we come to the third step toward the fulfillment of faith, confessing the rhema of God. Once God has spoken to us, what we speak is very critical to the ongoing development of faith. We, having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 13. What we truly believe will issue forth from our lips. The word that initiates faith in us is confirmed or denied out of our own mouth. We are warned not to waver in professing what God has said, no matter what circumstances may develop to the contrary. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for He is faithful that promised. Hebrews 10 verse 23. Many people begin to say things that destroy faith when circumstances do not transpire as they had visualized. Some make slanderous statements, defaming God's name and character. Our words reveal how we view God. Notice Israel's testimony of God when they heard the evil report of the ten spies. Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in this wilderness? Numbers 14, verse 2. Their confession kept them from entering the land. And what did they receive from God? They died in the wilderness as they had spoken with their own lips. Forty years later, after that generation finally died off in the wilderness, a new generation went through the Jordan River into Canaan to conquer Jericho. They were to march around the city for seven days, keeping quiet until the final shout. Could the reason that they were not to speak be that God wanted to spare them from destroying faith with a negative confession. One soldier expressing a tinge of fear or doubt could stir others the wrong way and undo the whole offensive. 
May we pray as David did in Psalm 141, verse 3, that the Lord would set a watch over our mouths and keep the door of our lips. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11, we are told that Sarah gave a good testimony of the Lord as she waited for the uh, fulfillment of his promise. For her confession was that he who promised was faithful. Her testimony of God enabled him to prove his faithfulness. Our confession validates our faith in the rhema of God and moves us closer to seeing it fulfilled. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. Job 22, verse 28. Number four, the obedience of faith, the steps of faith we have discussed thus are hearing the rhema of God, believing it, and confessing it. The next critical part we must act upon is identified by Paul, Romans 16, 26. But now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. This essential action on our part must not be ignored nor neglected if we are to see the fulfillment that causes us to receive his good report. Hebrews 11 verse 2. Often when God gives us a rhema, it not only contains promises, but also requires our obedience. Peter expresses this well. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 6 and 7. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. After believing what God has said, we must follow through with obedience. Peter makes the point here that those who do not believe are disobedient. They do not follow through so that faith can progress. Remember, a heart that truly believes takes action. For example, if I really believe that it would rain and I do not want to get wet, I will bring an umbrella. In reading about the heroes of faith in Hebrews 11, one can readily recognize the obedience of each one to the rhema God had spoken to them. Noah received a word from God to prepare an ark in order to save his family during the coming judgment. And Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him, Genesis 7, verse 5. His faith would never have been completed had he not obeyed the word of the Lord. He would have perished in the flood with many others who were disobedient. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 20. Our obedience to the rhema releases heaven's forces to act in our behalf. The obedience of faith is an essential for the fulfillment of the promise. Number five, patient waiting. The fifth element that is often necessary for the fulfillment of faith is patient waiting. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, 
because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Habakkuk 2.3. Occasionally, especially in the case of a new Christian, the word of faith is fulfilled almost immediately. This is the way we would most often choose it to be. However, most often this fifth step of faith proves to be an essential element. Habakkuk found this to be true as he received the word of the Lord. Though it tarry, wait for it. It seems that it usually does tarry necessitating our need to wait patiently after we have done what God told us to do. For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36 through 39. Most promises take time to be brought to fulfillment. God takes no pleasure in making us wait just to fulfill some needless amount of suffering. God's interest is not only that we receive the promise, but also that we obtain a good report from Him and develop a deeper relationship with Him as we are waiting. He takes pleasure in those who have learned to trust Him no matter what the circumstances. We must remember that the waiting time is not wasted time. During times of patient waiting, we come to know God's ways and His reasons for doing things the way He does. In fact, the waiting time is the very foundation upon which we can enter into God's promises without being destroyed by success. So many are impatient, wanting the promises more than they want God, who promised. Those who wait patiently demonstrate that they want to please Him more than anything else. Why does God speak promises to us and then make it necessary to wait? And therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you, and therefore will he be exalted, that he may have mercy upon you, for the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for him. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18. Patient waiting is necessary so that God can do the very best for us, his best takes time to develop. If we are impatient and move ahead, seeking to fulfill what we want in our own way and in our own timetable, we cannot receive His best. In the end, we will be disappointed with the results. We will have aborted what He was developing in us if we fail to steady our souls and wait patiently. He waits so that He can be gracious to us and display His great mercy to us. What a depth of contentment and satisfaction when the fulfillment of His promises is completed in us. When the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. Proverbs 13, verse 12. His blessing abounds fully in us if we are willing to wait until He has been able to develop everything He has planned to maturity. Each of these five elements of faith is essential 
in the fulfillment of a word of faith. We must remember that God initiates the whole process of faith in us with the rhema. The next three steps of believing what God said, confessing what God said, and obeying what God said are our necessary responsibility to the word of faith. The last step of waiting is normally a necessary step for us to bring faith to fulfillment. Jesus Christ finishes or completes the process of faith working in us with the fulfillment, even as it says in Hebrews 12, 2, that he is the author and finisher of our faith. We have waited many years for the fulfillment of God's promises for the church, for our fellowship, and perhaps even at a personal level. May we continue to feed the promises and keep them alive through believing and through a right confession. May we continue to wait patiently, knowing that the Lord works for those who wait for Him, bringing them into the fulfillment of His glorious and precious promises. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your gift of faith to us. Lord, I pray that you will teach us in your ways and may we understand how we should respond to the faith you uh, put in us, in our spirit, in our heart. Lord, we want to please you, we want to do your will and we just pray that, oh Lord, we shall learn to be patient, that we'll understand what is your timing and our time of response. We thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. The Lord richly bless you.